Brown bird. Brown bird. Brown bird. What else? Brown bird for the key removal. Got it up. Okay? Both feet. What else? Crown prep. Crown prep setup. Crown prep setup. That's the orange, which I was talking about. So you got a mirror, explorer. You have a hatchet. This one doesn't have one. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, so I have a hatchet. That's our um, planing instrument. Okay? You should have a spoon excavator. Uh, you should have a cord packer, a woodson, spatula, cotton forceps, articulating forceps holder, and syringe. Okay, let's explain this. This is really long. Okay, in an office, what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half and rip it. You don't need the long one. You can have one sheet for two people. And we're going to clamp it this way so it looks like a flag. Not this way on the inside of the, not on the same side as the bar. You want it on the other end. That's correct. Okay, so it looks like a flag. Uh, you got your cotton forceps, okay? You got your mixing spatula, you need it. This is our pretend accord. We were talking about sizes, remember? In the office, your sizes will be associated to a color. Well, we have different colors here. Don't pay attention to the color or whatever, you're gonna, depending on the brand you use, that's the color it'll be, okay? Because there could be different colors, purple, green, orange, whatever it is, depending on the number. But this is just examples of what sizes it can be. Sizes, we're talking about the thickness or diameter, okay? So that's that. So this is our cord, so we need a cord. And I have these little guys inside there, because this is a Daffin dish, plastic, one patient use. We're only using it on Dexter, so please save it, okay? You're going to use another one of these when you fabricate your temporary crown. We'll go over that in a different day. So we're going to separate the crown prep, or the crown fabrication from the procedure today. So we're going to have two different demos of that. So this is just the crown prep procedure. All right, so then you're going to need one of these, and we're going to pretend we have a hemostatic solution. Okay, so you can use water. I'm going to use water. And I'm going to put my cord ready for my doctor inside my water. So now I'm impregnating this cord. Okay, so to soak that up. All right, what else do we need? Uh, anesthetic setup. Anesthetic, anesthetic. Okay, so this was set up like that. Remember, I had a blue guy, the blue rubber piece that's in the in the drawer. Andrew, you grab that for me. And this guy are the same thing. This only goes on the needle. Needle first on your syringe. So I'll take it apart real quick. Thank This and this is the same thing. This one's rubber, this one's uh, cardboard. This one I can sterilize. This one I trash. Difference. Nike Reebok. Okay? <laughs> Wait, which one do you trash? Nike. Reebok. Reebok. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't associate that. <laughs> you actually trash them all. You know, you're, under you're under on the way to get them. All right, so anesthetics. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who never put the syringe together, there has a little cap that you twist and break. It's not present. Somebody did it already. So let's get one just in case. So, okay, the reason why I'm covering this, because remember we talked about Steven Stein. He didn't open this in front of the patient. There are patients that are scared from Steven Stein, and other doctors are doing the same thing, so they actually want to hear the... Crack. That means I've opened it just for him. Okay, so that's what that seal means. Then you're gonna put this needle first. Okay, and you're gonna screw where screw it on, righty tighty, lefty loosey, where the white portion of it is. That's the bevel. Make sure it's tight, securing it. Now this guy pulls and has a spring. So you're gonna pull him big. I tore apart that one. Anyway, I'm going to insert my back first. OK, 
say, because I'm pulling the spring with my hand. You can't see it. I'm a robot. But I'm pulling it apart one hand, loading my gray piece to the harpoon. I slide up my anesthetic to my needle so it engages instead of allowing the spring to push it up because you can damage the inside of that. Then your doctor will poke the patient and you won't get any anesthetic out. That's a bad day for you because you did it wrong. So I slide the cartridge up to that needle. Now I'm gonna make sure my harpoon is engaged into the rubber piece. I give it a little tap. That's ready to go. Now this goes on the needle cap. So when I take it off, I can put it in like this. We are taught we're not allowed to cap it like that if we don't have this guy. If you don't have that guy and this is how your office passes it, you're gonna put the needle down and you're gonna do a scoop motion. Once you scoop your needle into the cap, then you can finish with the other hand and putting it on tightly. If you are caught putting a needle cap with this on like this without one of these, you can be fired right then and there because you are a safety hazard to our office. Why? Because if you get poked by somebody who has HIV, we have to pay for that still. Okay, the, the office is still responsible for you if you mess up. But at the end of the day, why did you mess up? Why didn't you have this protecting you? Or why didn't you have this protecting you? Okay, same thing. What else do I need? Shave guide. Shave guide, I have two. These guys are per shade of the composite. Okay, but we're gonna use these because if you look at my Vita shade guide, somebody <laughs> broke him and lost my teeth already. Okay, so if you see him, please add the teeth back to him. This should have every single shade in there. So this isn't a correct shade guide anymore. Somebody's damaged it, broke it, and can't get it. Guess how much this costs? $300 for some plastic teeth. Serious. $300 to expense. If you made a lot of money this month and you get a bonus in your office, we're going to reduce that because now we have to pay for this guy. Now your bonus is going to be less. Okay, so usually it's 10%, which means $300 if we make $300,000. Now we got to pay for this guy, so it might reduce everybody's profit, everybody's bonus if your office gives bonuses. So make sure you guys put it back, spray wipe, spray these, because why? We're going to take one out, remember I was saying? We're going to wipe it against the cheek, then we're going to do our shade. Okay, depending on what shade he is. Okay, this is shade says on the device, this is C2. I'm going to put it up to my teeth. It doesn't look like it matches, right? Mm -hmm. This one looks darker. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to continue. So I got to go lighter. Remember I was talking about A, B, or C. So I'm going to go to an A because he was lighter than that. Try that again. I'm still a little bit darker, but a little bit closer, right? Thank you. Again, each one you're going to wipe. Pull it out one by one. I don't want you to do the shade guide like this. Why? Because then it'll start blending together. All right, once you get a shade, let's say he's in between two shades. So I'm gonna get two shades that I think he's in between and show you what I mean. Okay, let's say I wet this. So Dex don't have saliva. That's why I want it done on you guys. Wet it. I'm gonna give my patient a mirror, so make sure you set up a mirror in this procedure and your next procedure. So mirror, if that's not on there, add it. So Dex is gonna hold this. I'm gonna say shade one, so this is right side, or shade two. What's your, show me shade one again. All right, what's this one? I'm gonna get my patient's input because I'm in between two shades. So he's gonna tell me which one he likes better. Do you like the right or the left? Okay. I'm going to make sure that we know what shade we're getting. He's going to approve it. That's two, four eyes approving a shade because we don't want to go dark. If this is my patient, I don't want a treatment plan, a shade like this. I deliver this crown and he didn't say that was okay. I get it finally made. And that's what he's got to walk around with. No, guess what? Actually, we have to send this back to the lab to go get the, uh, the porcelain chipped off the metal and we have to do a new porcelain shade. And guess what? That's now more money to the lab. Okay, so now we pay 150 for the lab to make it. 
plus whatever the rechange of the shade is. So you wanna make sure you only do it once. So okay, make sure you get as close as possible, get the shade input from your patient, and then, hey, if, the, if you're still in between two shades, hey doc, you know what? I'm in between two shades. Which one do you like better? Me and the patient like are, are my left. What do you like? Okay. I actually like that one as well. You like the left as well? Okay, mm -hmm. good. We are all deciding on tooth number B. So Pete, if you can't decide, he can't decide. We have a third set of eyes ready to decide what shade we're going to put on because we only want to do this one time so we don't have to pay the extra fee. Now let's talk about shading. If they say, oh, I want, if they, let's say they like this shade and this one's a little bit darker, I can reach the shade they're going to say, right? I can get this shade. Well, yeah, but now we're going to probably upsell this procedure, meaning we're going to start selling bleach trays. We can have them bleach for two weeks, the rest of his teeth, fabricate and do another shade guide in two weeks to make sure we got the shade that he actually wants. So this procedure can turn into a four week procedure. Maybe if he wants to whiten between it. Let's say this is the brightest shade that he has, but he wants to get this because we showed it to him. This is a sales technique to bring more profit into your office. Bigger, more money the office makes, more bonus you may have. Okay, so you can say, oh, well, you, if you really like the shade, let's make some bleach trays today. We'll send you home with some bleach tray and you're gonna put it in for two weeks and then we'll do another shade check. Hopefully we achieve these. And then we go into our bleach spill. Okay, that from procedure, we're not going to get into it. We'll get into it for you new guys some way in your procedure or in your um, time here. Okay, so this is shade guide. What's next? Quadrant impression trays. Quadrant impression trays. And she's my runner. Do you have it? Uh, okay, so we're going to post here. I got you. Never mind. Okay. Triple tray looks like this. Top drawer. So this um, pullout's closest to us. The pullout's. That's where you're gonna find it, top drawer. Posterior looks like this, okay? So depending on which side we work on, this can go here, this can go here. Can't go in the front, posterior only. That's what we're doing, posterior. I'm gonna get two out, or maybe three. Why, because I got a prelim I have to take, and I also have my final impression I have to take. But if I only get two, dental assistant's curse, if you don't set up another one, you may do the final impression bad. So you may have to redo it. So make sure you give yourself so you don't have to keep getting up, going in my drawer possibly with gloves on, trying to hurry up and get a new impression taken. So set up maybe three, just in case you have to redo it. Okay? So we're gonna need three. If you don't have it, write that down. What else? Two by two gauze. Gauze, okay, I got some. HPE. HPE, got it. Cotton roll. I don't have cotton roll. Cotton roll. I don't have cotton roll. What instrument? Hand cutting. So our hand cutting that we have on this setup is a one-ended hatchet. This side is broke. Okay. Difference between a hatchet and a cord packer on this setup. One is small, one is big. One has cutting ends, the other one has a cutting tip. The long one is the cord packer. The short one is your hatchet. Let's pass that around. What up? Cord packing instrument. A short one. Okay, just cord. covered that. Retraction cord. Retraction cord, okay, we have it soaking in, or getting impregnated with my mm -hmm. uh, hemodent or um, vasoconstrictor material. Hemodent is the next one. Hemodent, we're using water, so tap, put side parentheses if you need to know, water. Light body impression with, oh, light body impression material syringe with intraoral bed. Okay, so this one is only blue bike. So, uh, Anthony, light body and blue body, and if you can bring me more guns. Technically, I need two guns. Also, you want to look at the end, this end. This means it's full. This means it's empty. So, this is empty. Can you please get in the cabinet above there and get a blue bike that's full? I might need more. <laughs> This one is light body, and this one is heavy body, okay? Again, I'm going to add this in. If you keep the top, good for you.
But if not, if you don't have this in your office, this is the top once I squirt. This means I'm ready to use it on my patient. Do not press this out. Okay, you tip with this, guys. You want to make sure they're working properly. How do you make sure they work properly? You want to make sure each tube is giving impression material. Okay, so I'm going to squeeze it out. I got even amount. That means he's working properly. I'm going to put this on. The reason why you want to test it without it in, because if I squeeze that, I just ruin that. That's going to get hard by the time I'm ready to use it. Now I need a new tip. Okay, so this will make the lid once we're done in the mouth. We need new tip, <laughs> I think I got some. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, blue, this, or this blue one, if you can. Not a skinny tip that comes to a point, the one with the barrel, yeah. All right, so light body also has a tip because light body has to get squirted around a tooth, so you want to make sure it has the intraoral tip. Okay, so light body should look like this and clear, so that means it's ready to go for my patient. I just verified it works without the tip on, and now I have my intraoral tip, and I have my regular tip on, okay? So I have blue bite. This is empty. M, did you find me blue bite? Yeah, it's right there. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. Told you I was going to be running today. So you want to make sure, look at this guy. This guy means we're almost done, but I'm pretty sure with light body, I'm not going to use all that material. So I still have enough for this procedure. The longer the outside is, that means it's full. The shorter it's in, that means it's empty. So that's a quick way to see if you have material. If the more in it has, get another cartridge. We can change the tip and change the cartridge in between the procedure. This is a point taken off your procedure if you don't pay attention to how much is in the cartridge. I will dock your procedure. This is five points. This is important. Okay? Important step. Five points. I know. <laughs> blue bite. What's blue bite used for? Prelim. Prelim. Preliminary impression, which means the impression we're going to take. On this patient, we're working on tooth number 18. Okay, I'm going to have my patient try this in because when I have him, I want him to bite correctly with the material here. So he doesn't know how to bite, so I'm going to try it in. Okay, Dex, I'm going to put this in. Make sure that this goes distal of the last two. She is here. Okay, and we're going to put it like this, and we're going to bite together, trying this in, making sure he knows how to bite it. Oh, is this your correct bite? Because patients bite like this. All right, this. All right, good. Stay down. Tell a patient that's numb how to bite and they just bite. Is that the way you normally bite? No? Then bite that way. Oh, why didn't you bite that way before? Well, they're numb. They probably don't know what they're doing. Okay? Make sure you practice trying this in. That is counting as a point. So I must watch it. So, okay? What do you guys got? like 500 points. I'm telling you, you're hot. This one is picky. This is why. Okay? So we're going to try this in. Bite? Okay, good. Now I'm going to take my blue bite impression or my preliminary impression. Pre before it's happening. And I'm going to only put the impression material on the side or the arch that I'm working on. Okay? Not on the top, just the bottom. And I'm going to put this down like this. And he's going to bite together. Doc, would you mind holding it? Thank you. Okay, so that's the prelim impression. That is important. Why? Everybody remember? That's how I make my temporary restoration. If you don't have this, how are you going to make a temp? Well, posterior, we have some SSC crowns. Oh, now we got to deliver a silver crown. He walked in with a tooth color crown. He doesn't want an SSC. This happened to make tooth color because my material or my acrylic that I'm using is going to be tooth color. Okay, if you don't bake this, now you have to fabricate a tooth out of SSC. Well, we don't want to do that. Give them the best stuff possible. But if you mess up, that's what you're going to have to do. Or you're going to make a cube, and you're going to try to make it look like a tooth. Guess what? Now, if you're artsy, you've got only 20 minutes to make that cube or the dice. Let's call it a dice, right? It's going to look like a dice. Look like a molar. 
How creative are you to do that? I know you're not because some of you guys cut my margin. Think you can see it if you don't draw the line. So we'll cover, remember again, fabrication tomorrow. So we're just doing one thing at a time. <laughs> okay, here's a little bit of material outside of this. I'm gonna test it and play with it. Why? Because I'm gonna make sure I know when that's done. Okay, so you wanna either squirt it here or have enough sticking out so you can fill if this is hard. Okay, doctor, it's hard. Let's have the patient open. Go ahead, open, wiggle your jaw. Oh, good. And then we're gonna wiggle this off. Make sure that we pull it off slowly so we don't ruin it. And now I have an impression for my fabrication on my tooth. But look at the tooth before, I'm gonna pass it around. Has a missing filling. Okay, so now I just took a preliminary impression with a missing filling. How do I, if I don't take that portion out, if I fill that tooth, oh man, we're gonna have a messed up crown. So I'll show you how to fix that when we get to that point. Oh, next, what else do we need? Um, heavy body. Heavy body. Heavy body is this guy, it's uh, pink. Okay, differences between a blue tip and a yellow tip. Let's talk about this so you know which tip to use. See how short it is? That means it needs less room to mix. We want it this long because it mixes well once it gets here. Once we get here, if we use light body with a short tip, it might mix properly and then we might get like water. So our consistency might be off. So you want the bigger barrel if you can. This guy you may want to use for blue bite. Quick and easy. We don't need to mix as much, but you can probably use it for blue bite. So if you use this guy for blue bite, this guy for your um, Intraoral tip for light and your heavy body. Okay, so blue. If you can get me another blue one. Did you see it, Estella? Did you see it? Okay, so I'm just going to show you how to squirt this just a little bit. Look it. See how much I push it in? There's nothing going, so this is brand new. Before I use it again on my patient, I'm gonna make sure that it's working correctly. Squirt a little bit out, put my tip on. Now I'm ready to use. How do you use this? How do you pump it? So I'm gonna pass this. We're gonna go into the procedure when we do. The way these are passed, okay, so the doctor gets the light body and I have the heavy body. So once he, I pass this, I need to load this, okay? So I'm going to load this and I have to load both upper and lower of the tray. And you want to make sure you don't lift up off the tray. Once you lift up off the tray, you're going to create a bubble. So watch how I load, okay? Get closer, video. Okay, so this okay. one is already the okay as she's filling i'm using this in the mouth okay. okay she's gonna build a snowman or an ice cream cone and then i'm gonna fill this tray keeping even doing wiggle lines oops i squeeze i squeeze too much and push too much so i'm doing like that then i'm gonna start again not lifting up just pulling it against the tray once she's done pressing i'm waiting for delivery she's gonna pass this back this is ready to go in the direction it goes and our patient's going to bite because we just practiced trying that in. There we go. And now we're going to fabricate a final impression that looks like this. I'm a cookie show. Okay. So that's how it goes. Now we're going to wait. This impression is a six, five to six minute impression, meaning our patient has to hold together five to six minutes. Don't ask him questions. Don't ask him to move his jaw. Yep, just like that. Okay, <laughs> he has to bite on it for five to six minutes. Okay, give your patient, make sure, here's your bib just in case you drool. Because this, at this time, we're getting ready to fabricate or trim our temporary crown when this is happening. We have six minutes to do something instead of just sitting here waiting. Okay, so we're going to utilize this time. But again, we're going to separate it tomorrow. We'll go into the fabrication demo. All right. So, this is getting happening, six minutes timer. We're gonna make sure that our impression that I'm passing around has no bubbles on the margin. 
No bubbles near it. How do we get rid of the bubbles? Pop them. No. <laughs> you make sure the tooth is dry. No water. No saliva. Plus, you rinse off our hemodent solution from the cord that was impregnated in the gingiva. Question. How can you tell if there's a missing filling? Is it the occlusion? So do you see how it's up? The tooth in front of it, 19? There's something in the middle of my occlusal. So I'm going to cut that out. But I'll show that tomorrow because I'm going to use him tomorrow. Okay? We're done. So I got my prelim doc. We're waiting for a final. Very good. What's my next stuff that I need? Acrylic. Acrylic? Okay, well, I'm going to separate that for tomorrow. Um, Tem cement. Temporary cement. Temporary cement. I'm using Reliax. Equal amounts. Okay, we need a catalyst and a base. Yeah. I got the little guy, and I'm going to do little amounts, same size. I'll show you little amounts because some of you guys like to. Okay. <laughs> So little amounts. That's a little amount. Okay, I'm gonna make the other side or the other. That's a catalyst. I got a base. Same size. Okay, little bit. Okay, this is ready to go. Once I mix it, that means I'm activating it. So I can't use that until I'm ready to use it. Don't squirt it out because you have a long procedure to do first. We haven't even gotten to our procedure. We're just making sure setup is correct. Okay, next. I got that right here. I kind of showed you how to put it together. Make sure it's a flag, not near the metal. Floss with a knot. Floss with a knot. I need floss. Why not? Why not? I don't no, know. I thought that was a pin. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't say why not. She said why a not. I know. Alright, well, there's this. Yeah, you already saw it? So, I need scissors. Anything else? Yeah. Maybe my hat people put it. Why a not? So, she asked me why a not. Let's see, can anybody ask her why a not? Yeah, it gets the extra. Right, it gets excess cement out. So when I put this in my patient's mouth, thank you, Miss Rose. Okay. Here's a flash of no knot. I was trying to throw it, but I Rip it. Okay. Sorry. This is about 18 inches. We use 18 inches to floss an entire mouth. In this procedure, please give me enough to wrap both my hands around it and I can floss that area. So I need probably that much, half than that, maybe even a quarter than that, okay? Just make sure that the doc can wrap this finger, wrap this finger, and use it to floss, okay? All right, so why does it need a knot? So once I put it in, and this temporary crown has temporary cement, so once it gets dislodged, or we're gonna check our contacts, I'm gonna put it in, Okay, and I'm gonna pull the knot through to dislodge the permanent cement or the temporary cement in the, in the gums. Easier to get out, because we gotta floss it out. That's why the knot. That's the why knot. Okay, what else? Lab box with prescription pad and clip. Prescription pad, okay, I don't have it. I'm gonna, my prescription pad, my lab box, because I'm gonna put my prelim, I'm gonna put my final impression, and my lab slip, ready to go and send it to the lab, okay? Needs to be in something like this. They're up above here. Anything else? Okay, so pre-ops are, I review your medical history. Hey doc, no changes in medical history. My vitals were 128 over 72, pulse of 63. Um, uh, we're also working on tooth number 18. Consent form was signed. Say what? Consent form was signed. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think no, you pre-lived. Okay. Are we actually drilling today? Yeah. You can pretend. For, oh, number 18 is already prepped. Oh, okay. Not really. In a real mouth, they won't be, right? <laughs> no, not in a real mouth. Okay. So while my doctor's setting up, look, I'm doing a, a trying to help him out, laying my patient bound. All he has to do is wait for me to give him his marinade floor because he's going to just touch the tube. Okay. 
so the laptop's not working well. Is that a spider? No, that's it. Eek! No, that's a bird. Eek, it's a spider, right? <laughs> that was the bird? Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. <laughs> that was kind of cool because they're kind of broken. That's okay. I've never seen them do that. Okay, notice how I put my light away from my patient's eyes, okay? Because we want to make sure that this is above both of our heads, ready to turn without our eyes lifting up for my patient. So then I'm going to add this. Let's do the whole procedure first, so we're going to try this. Okay. All right, Doc, don't move so ahead. No, do you. Okay, so step one, right? Basic pass. She's right-handed, not left-handed. I'm a two-handed passer. How do you pass? I'm usually two-handed. Okay, two-handed. We got two-handed. Miss Rose is a one-handed. So that was a two-handed. Let's show them one-handed real quick. Can you pass it back to me? Okay. Okay, so one-handed. Miss Rowe, you like it in one hand. Ready to go. Okay, that's Miss Rowe. Two different doctors. I, two hands. She's two hands. If Miss Rose is checking you up, it's one hand. Learn how to switch. Write the note if you don't know that. Okay, she's verifying the tune. Okay. Okay, topical. Gauze. I don't want to pass it with the gauze here. I want to pass it with the gauze in the back or separate because she's got to wipe the gingiva first. And then this has topical gel on there. She's going to get the area numb. So we can give anesthetic. Yeah, I just... Did that just... So is that how you're going to take it? No. Okay. I was watching you. <laughs> okay, guess what? Some doctors may have you expose the needle. If that's the case, you put it so the doctor can get it next. Okay, so I'm going to let go. Let my doctor work. Okay. I'm going to set up, ready to suction, because that's my next step, right? So, full mouth, two. All right, close. Okay. Open. <laughs> All right. So now, okay, doctor may get up and go do other exams across the room, probably go get another patient numb. He has to leave. My turn to do my prelim. Okay, have that ready for doc. But I'm not going to put it down on the table because my patient has saliva, so I'm going to barrier that. My prelim. And then I'm going to check my shade. Okay, verify my tooth. Have that ready for Doc. If Doc wants to verify the shade, you're going to put the shade guide right next to the, your prelim. If he trusts you, you're going to write it down. So if there's a pen over here. Is that yours? Okay, I, I always steal it. So A2 is our shade. Tooth number 18. I'm writing that down. Okay, making sure I have that ready to add to my... Uh, lab slip, or you have your lab slip here ready to write. But before you dismiss the patient, you have to make sure the lab slip is filled out. Next step. Try and trade for final impression. Ah, so final impression. So I already did this, so I'm going to try it in one more time. And I need more trade. That's our six-handed assistant. Thank you. All right, let me get ready because now Doc is going to come in. Hey, Doc, I'm ready. My Doc is going to verify that I match the shade, probably check my prelim. He's just making sure you did your job correctly. Okay, he's got his handpiece in his hand. I need to be ready. Okay, already ready before he gets started. So I'm going to retract with this guy, and I'm going to come on the buckle side of tooth number 18. My bevel is going to point towards the distal, and I'm going to retract the cheek. Oh, here, Doc, you need to retract the tongue. Thank you. You need any cotton rolls? Oh, yeah, cotton rolls. Yeah, that's isolate. Two on the lingual, one on the buckle. But for deck's sake, we're going to put it here. So go ahead and hold that, Doc. Mm-hmm. Can you hold that? Yeah, I got it. Are you sure? Sure. There you go. You got it. Okay. So again, this is on the on the buckle of the tooth. So if this is the tooth right next to the cheek. I'm on the buckle. Out he of the swallowed, way. He swallowed the cotton. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't holding it, doctor. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Okay. I'm no, on top of it. Press there we go. Now you're holding it. Yay! 
Okay. She's gonna roll. Okay. So I'm gonna retract. Oops. He saw it again. Oh, there it is. <laughs> He's gonna die today. <laughs> <laughs> I wish his cheek was properly on. Okay, so the mirror is holding us, okay? Okay, there we go. I'm out of my doctor's way, so if you look at my positioning, we'll sit closer to the sheet. Okay, I'm away, I'm on the gingiva, I'm plus over two, ready to capture. I don't see any air on my, or water coming out of my doctor's handpiece. So I'm spraying water, making sure my teeth don't burn. Okay. Okay. Give my patient some base. I'm gonna dry it because now my doctor's probably gonna look to verify he removed any decay. If he has more decay, he's gonna use a slow speed hand piece. Huh? What is that? Oh, the air. The explorer. Oh, the explorer. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. He's checking for a stick, just in case if you do get a stick, there's more decay. Okay, okay. he's all good. He's yeah. all good? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're, she says we're going to skip the slow speed. Okay, okay. No, some doctor? One spot. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm in position because he's got the hand piece in his hand, remember? And I'm drying it because it's slow speed. It gets good, good. Removal of decay of dry. Write that down if it's not there. Dry for slow speed. And when he's done, I'm going to rinse and dry. So add that if that's not there. See how I covered the shoe? Making sure my water goes in my thing. Dry it off for my doctor. He's going to check one more time. Okay, good to go. Good. All right. So, what's my next step, guys? Spoon excavator. Spoon. Just in case we have more decay, she's going to verify again or remove what we have. If that's the case, please put a um, two by two in your hand, ready to clean off if she's going to use it mm -hmm. or take it. Next. So, I'm going to cast my hatchet. One ended. Okay, one ended. So if you bring me a broken one, make sure you pass the one that's working. <laughs> I'm still and ready, ready to capture. Okay, next one. I'm gonna ask Doctor Wright to change my cotton rolls. Oh, spritz, because it's cutting. Drying it off once you wet it, you want to dry it. And now let's change our cotton rolls, right? So, yep, so we'll take that out. So, cotton forcep, maybe if the doctor wants it, <laughs> take the old one, pass the new one. Okay, what are we getting ready to do? Pack a cord. Okay, so now I'm going to take my cord that I impregnated with solution. I'm going to tie or put my feet together like this, and I'm going to clamp it to the back. So this part right here is the back of the instrument, and I'm going to pass it with the loop. I want to pass it as close as I can here because Doc is going to grab it back here. Okay, he's going to put it on the loop. I'm going to get my cord packer in ready because whenever he's done with that, take it and transfer that. And I'm just going to be ready for him to be done. That's all. I'm just waiting for him to pack it around the entire tooth. You want to make sure it's long. So like your pinky is anterior. Maybe your pointer is a molar. Okay, meaning put your cord. If you don't know the size, you're going to wrap the cord around here to make your cut. Or if the doctor likes two cords, make sure you have two cords out. I'm a two cord doctor. Most of my doctors I work are two cord. Or I'm going to make it long enough to wrap it twice. Okay, I know it's Dexter, but, you know. Okay. Okay, good enough. 
Okay, once he's done, maybe gauze so we don't lick it. So he bites, right? We're holding this for how long? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Five minutes have passed. I'm going to pass the cotton forcep. They're going to remove it. Sometimes you may deviate and grab a, um, an explorer to pull the tail up. So put that as a side note. You may need explorer if we can't find the tail in to pick it up. So once she's ready, I'm not going to put that cord in my hand because it has blood on it. So I use a two by two to catch it. Okay, cut it. Now I'm going to rinse and completely dry that tooth because I had heme in it. It created a scab, has blood. Okay, dry it, completely dry. We're also going to isolate again. We're going to change cotton roll, right, Doc? You got a wet cotton roll? Yeah. Okay. He swallowed it. What? He swallowed it. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to do our final impression. Okay, is that dry, Doc, or how does that look? That looks good. Looks Thank good? You. He swallowed it again. He swallowed it again? Okay. Yeah. So we're going to pretend on this one. Usually you'll have an empty tip. But we're going to pretend on this one because we just did it, okay? So I'm going to pass him that. And I'm going to get, once he starts, I got to start. Okay? Which means it's going to look like this. He's going to put it in the mouth. We're going to wait five minutes. Make sure he bites on it correctly. Come on, Dexter, you can do this. There. There we go. Six minutes, okay? All right, six minutes passed. Take a look. Doc is going to verify that that's a good impression. Okay. If it's for a real doctor's office, I would not like this because you tell me why. Okay, so we're looking at this impression. Okay, I'm looking at the margin. The margin mm -hmm. on my mesial buckle isn't very clear. Um, on this guy particularly so we're gonna say it's good if it's bad we have to do another impression mm -hmm. you may also have to pack the cord again so that procedure goes back and forth if we have a fail position or a fail in our impression so write that down so any type of bad impression you start from cord again you pack the cord you take an impression some doctors say one cord packing two impressions that's it once you get two we have to repack the cord Two more impressions. Hopefully by the second one you get it great. So we're gonna just say that's good. Good job. Okay, now we're gonna fabricate. I'm gonna get this ready for tomorrow. Okay. Sorry. So we would fabricate this. So tomorrow we're gonna use this. So this guy, I'm gonna take out because it's sitting higher than the occlusal. I need this to sit down on the tooth as close as possible or that's gonna enable me to get there. So I'm going to peel that out. So see how it's flat inside there now. I'm also going to cut out my mesial area, my embrasure area, both mesial and my distal and make, make it flat because I want tight contact. So if you don't cut out your, in, in your proximal area, you won't get a tight contact. Okay. So that's how I get a tight contact. No matter what is I cut the proximal surface off right here. That's a proximal surface. All you do is go straight down, take it off. Okay, again, straight down, take it off. Now I have a full place to make it tight. That's a trick, that's an edit trick. A lot of people don't know that. I'm telling you, that's so you don't have to redo it again because it's something to remake it twice. All right, we're gonna do mm. now. <laughs> <laughs> You got enough, so yeah. There should be a crown in here.